Genryu Sai Yamamoto is by far one of the most badass anime old men of all time. With the pecs of a master Roshi and the firepower of the Human Torch himself, this man had two of the biggest bads in the Bleachverse, Sosuke Aizen and Yuha Baha, the sealed Quincy King, shook to their core. He is by far one of the most badass Shinigami in history. And yet, despite this, his death might be the single most important death in all of Bleach. And I'm going to explain that in this video right here, so let's get into it. What's good, y'all? It's your boy, Guac Papa Dustin, whatever the hell y'all want to call me. Back at you again with another video today. As always, feel free to follow me on my other social media down below, my Twitch, TikTok, Instagram, gaming channel, all that good jazz. So to jump right into this video, okay, when looking at Genryu Sai Yamamoto and what his death means to the Soul Society, I want to go back to the fake Karakura Town arc when he's fighting against Sosuke Aizen. Well, not really fighting against him, he more or less is on the ground in pain after stopping Wonder Wise from exploding with all of his flames. But it's what Aizen says to him in that moment right there that I want you to pay attention to. Editing Guac here, unfortunately the clip I wanted to put in got copyrighted so I had to take it down. Anyways, this is the manga panel right here where Aizen says that Yamamoto was the embodiment of the Soul Society's history. So I put it right up here for you guys. Anyways, let's continue. Right there, Sosuke Aizen says that Yamamoto was the embodiment of the Soul Society's history. Right there is the reason why I think his death is so important to the Soul Society. And to the entire plot of the Thousand Year Blood War itself. Because Yamamoto truly represents the history of the Soul Society. He represents the strength and power of the Soul Society. He was the one that got the original Gote 13 together. The Gote 13 that Yuhabaha respected and feared for so many years. He represented its history and its strength even to that very day. To the point when, when the Quincy's came and he decided to join the battle with the other Shinigami, they all became motivated by feeling the flames of his Ryujin Jaka. When he entered into the battlefield, they got a new sense of hope, of motivation, that their captain had joined the battle and was willing to fight and die alongside them. The true strength of the Soul Society had stepped in to conquer Yuhabaha once more. And yet, in no time at all, all those hopes were dashed. Because what Yamamoto didn't realize in that moment when he went to fight against Yuhabaha wasn't just the fact that it wasn't Yuhabaha he was fighting. But in that moment, we as the readers, and he himself probably, realized that he had made terrible mistakes. Back in the day, during his younger years, when the original Gote 13, he was a guy who only sought strength and power. That's how they were able to defeat the Lith Reich when they first came around. But over the years, he became much more peaceful. He sought to help teach the future generations, including people like Uketake and Shunsui. He became more peaceful and reserved as the years went on, to the point when, when he was talking with the young Shunsui and he looked at an old picture of himself, he said it was a monster he would hope would never come back to the Soul Society. That's how he viewed his younger self. They were no longer savage warriors like they used to be. It was because of his unwillingness to receive help from Ichigo Kurosaki or Orihime Inoue to regrow his arm that caused him to stumble. Yamamoto made a lot of mistakes, especially when it came to fighting against the Quincy's and even against Sosuke Aizen himself. These were weaknesses that even Aizen and Yuha Baha played against against Yamamoto. But even in his final moments in the Thousand Year Blood War, he still refused to let go of his sword against Yuha Baha, showing that he still had strength, but his change had cost him greatly. He wasn't prepared for what the Quincy's were going to bring to him in the Serete. The Quincy's had evolved, motivated by their hatred of the Shinigami, motivated by revenge, and also the return of the sealed king, Yuhabaha himself. And even though he had changed his Bankai, you know, his Zankai no Tachi East, and even though he was still willing to go up against a powerful threat such as Yuhabaha, he made obvious mistakes. Mistakes Yuhabaha pointed out to him before finally finishing him off. And it was finishing him off in that moment that Yamamoto and the Soul Society truly died. After his death, even though Shunsui became the head captain after him, everybody was just so heartbroken by his death and so defeated by his death that they almost couldn't even keep themselves together. The pain of the loss to Genryu Sai Yamamoto, the pain of losing their head captain, the man who was their strength, their history, everything who embodied the Soul Society was now gone. That right there is when the Soul Society truly died. It didn't matter if Ichigo came. It didn't matter what he did against Yuhabaha. It didn't even matter that his Bankai was broken by Jugram Hoshfalt. The Soul Society had already been defeated. And it all came down with Yamamoto's death. 
Yamamoto's death signified the end of the Soul Society at that moment, but as the Thousand Year Blood War continued on, a new Soul Society would be born. A Soul Society that was going to be stronger, be better, not make the same mistakes, not one that just had to rely on Ichigo Kurosaki, but so that they could make themselves stronger, so that they could stand up to the sealed Quincy King, Yuhabaha. That's an eye honest opinion why Yamamoto's death was so important. It meant the death of the Soul Society of the old, but it also gave birth to a new, stronger Soul Society. But that's just my opinion. You guys let me know what you think down in the comments below. Anyways, another quick video I wanted to put out for you guys today about Genryu Yamamoto and why his death was so important to the plot of the Thousand Year Blood War. You guys let me know if I miss anything. Uh, obviously, I haven't completed the full Thousand Year Blood War anime or manga yet, so there's probably some things I didn't miss, but you guys let me know that in the comments below. Anyways, I thank you guys for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.